So Rosh Hashanah is really a time for us to take stock of the year that's been. And honestly, I got to say, I spent a lot of 5784 feeling anxious and stuck. And I call this the ABC experience. Anti-Semitism, both before October 7 and after, there has been a huge increase in incidents worldwide. Bigotry, as our national discourse has degraded into vilifying immigrants and meme wars. More about that at Yom Kippur. And climate change, with our planet having experienced 15 consecutive months of the hottest average temperatures on record. 15 months. And we're still reeling from the destruction from Hurricane Helene. And I've been wondering, how does Judaism help us regain some, the fiddler on the roof moment, help us regain some equilibrium, some balance? How do Jewish traditions and teachings offer us guidance in maintaining our own grounded sense of self. Or maybe even in just finding some hope. I'd like to share an answer that I found when I was least expecting it. As the summer ended, I went to go see the Auschwitz exhibit in Boston. Quick show of hands, how many people Went to go see it. All right. Nice. Nice. Two parts of the exhibit touched me very deeply. The first of these was a section on the survivors. And I learned that many of those who survived the camps had something in common. They maintained connections with one another during their time in the camps. They tried to remain human for one another, specifically as the Nazis were doing everything that they could to dehumanize them. By caring for others, they were cared for in turn, and this helped sustain them. The second part of the exhibit that struck me was a small label on a display next to a very ordinary looking shofar. And the text on the label said that that particular shofar had been sounded in Auschwitz in 1944. This means that someone had put their life on the line to sound that shofar in the camp while it was still under Nazi control. As I stood there just gazing at this very ordinary looking shofar, having just heard how the people in the camps found real strength together, a story suddenly came back to me. It was from a book Hasidic Tales of the Holocaust by Yaffa Eliach. Amazing book. I have it in my office. I'll let you borrow it if you like. Blaine Netter. And Yaffa Eliach compiled this tale from the testimony from survivors of Bergen-Belsen, another concentration camp. It's near the high holidays, and a barracks of Jews in the camp is offered the opportunity to get a hold of some contraband, a shofar. And so they debate, is it worth the risk? Because if it's discovered, it would mean death for everyone in those barracks. The answer ultimately is yes. They accept the offer. They smuggle in the shofar. Why did they take the risk? I feel it's because they wanted to hang on to some key part 
of themselves that the Nazis couldn't touch. Something that was meaningful, that affirmed who they really were. Something that could remind them of their personal identity and Jewishness and humanity in this inhumane setting. And so they sound the shofar quietly so that the guards wouldn't hear. Here's how the tale concludes. Then the service was over. Nothing had changed. The barbed wires remained fixed in their places. Only in the heart did something stir. Knowledge and hope. Knowledge that the muffled voice of a shofar had made a dent in the Nazi wall of humiliation and slavery. And hope that someday freedom would bring down the barbed wire fences of Bergen-Belsen. That story crystallized what I'd seen in the Auschwitz exhibit. And it inspired a new flash of knowledge and of hope in me too. This was a way to resolve the question that so many of us have been asking. How do we cultivate resilience in the face of uncertainty and despair. Many years ago, Rabbi Abraham Joshua Heschel framed an answer for us in poetic terms. He wrote, prayer invites God's presence to suffuse our spirits and God's will to prevail in our lives. Prayer may not bring water to parched fields, or mend a broken bridge, or rebuild a broken city. But prayer can water an arid soul. It can mend a broken heart. It can rebuild a weakened will. According to Heschel, Prayer doesn't have the ability to affect the world outside. And we know this. Prayer takes place in our hearts, in the world inside. When we open our hearts to the possibility of change, we sometimes find that we gain some hope. We get the inspiration that can lead us to change the world outside. In Bergen-Belsen, the people found hope when they shared the shofar together. Their decision helped them to maintain their connection to Judaism and their essential humanity. And that internal experience was transformative and it nourished new endurance. And that spiritual warmth manifested in the cold world outside by helping them to survive the brutal oppression of their captors. Back in Boston, as I left the exhibit, I felt humble and very grateful those who had survived the Holocaust revealed a deep teaching for us to treasure. Thank heaven we live in modern America. We have real challenges, don't get me wrong, but they're nothing compared to those that we had seen in Auschwitz. And this makes it all the more important for us to honor the experiences of that generation. Their wisdom 
can guide us to find new resilience and purpose. And like many important ideas, it's made up of very simple steps. First, when we're shaken by events, turn to someone else. Who might that be? Maybe you're sitting next to them right now. Who knows? This helped those in the generation of the Holocaust, and it has sustained Jewish communities throughout the generations. And this is why Jewish community exists, to provide the opportunity to share our strength in tough times so that we're not alone with our challenges, so that we have someone by our side. That's why we're here. And another lesson that I derived from this exhibit is that we have the ability to choose our responses to events in the world around us. Those in Bergen-Belsen chose to take a risk that had the potential to bring them enormous hope. And in our own day, we can choose, as I had been doing, to sit and fret and do nothing. Or we can choose to explore new ways to take action, even if it might feel a little too small to bother with at first. As Heschel teaches us, when we begin shifting the world inside us, we find new ability to change the world outside of us. I took this teaching to heart. I didn't have to accept feeling glum and powerless in the face of the ABCs of anti-Semitism and bigotry and climate change. I realized I could choose a new approach that might just make some small, teeny, tiny difference in even just one of these issues. <clears throat> and so as I left the exhibit, I made the decision to take some action. When I got home, I formally accepted the invitation to serve as the clergy convener for the Jewish Climate Action Network of Massachusetts, of JCAN. By sharing our concerns about the world with nerve that we're leaving to our children, I believe deeply that we can encourage the larger Jewish community to join us in the holy work of becoming Shomre Adoma, holy guardians, caretakers of our planet. And in choosing to answer that call, you know what? I found oh, a, new, a new lightness. I felt a an ease of some of that, that tension that had been knotting me up and bending me over and giving me really, really bad backaches. I found some ease in the world outside that mirrored a change in my world inside. Just like Heschel was saying, exploring that potential within invites the possibility for positive change. And as we learn from Jewish history, when we offer the best of ourselves to others, we're strengthened. We're renewed in turn. So as we enter this new year together, let's commit ourselves. It's like Asha was challenging us earlier, both as individuals and as a congregation, to try something new in 5785. Where'd Jerry go? Jerry, that guy right over there tomorrow morning is going to offer us some concrete suggestions of how to try something new this year at Bethel. Listen to him. He's a smart guy. And in the spirit of new beginnings, dare yourself 
to accept even one of these invitations or, or find some way of your own to make a positive difference in our very tiny, small corner of the world, in our little Anatevka of Bethel. <laughs> and if you're not ready quite yet for that step, take advantage of this high holiday season as an opportunity for reflection and for seeking here with the support, with the care of your community. The important thing is to remember, we have the ability to choose how we want to respond to events in our world. And when we act in partnership with those in our community, we may find more strength than we could possibly have imagined. As we hear the sound of the shofar tomorrow, may it guide us to find new knowledge of our shared strength. May it kindle new hope within us as we draw close to one another here at Bethel. And may it inspire us to begin this new year in sweetness with our loving community. Ken Yehi Ratzon. Prochem to hear.